Thank you for joining our session today, where we'll do a deep dive on how you can use play asset delivery within your game to deliver optimized assets to your users. My name is Andrew Giuliano, and I'm a developer advocate working to help developers be successful on Android and Play. We'll also be hearing from my teammate Shen Shen later in this talk. Before we delve into the product, let's take a step back and look at a problem developers are facing today and how we are helping to solve it. When packaging assets within your game, you have a few options. You can place them all within your main game download, but then you run into size limitations pretty quickly, and it's overall a bad experience for the user as they wait for their long downloads to complete. You may choose to use a CDN. However, this comes with its own limitations. Downloads can't happen until after the game is launched, so the user might be caught with an untimely download prompt when first opening your game. Features such as auto updates need to be managed on your side, and then you'll need to pay for the service. So to help solve these problems, Google launched Play Asset Delivery, or PAD for short, back in 2020. This feature allows developers to dynamically deliver assets to their game on play. Today, we're going to start off by doing a brief overview of PAD and how it works. Then we'll do a deep technical dive on integrating PAD so that you have the know-how to start using it today. We'll also cover some new advanced features, which will allow you to optimize the assets you deliver with PAD. Finally, we'll talk about how a few of our partners have found success with PAD and its new features. Great, so let's do a quick overview of the product. PAD is built upon the Android app bundle, which allows you to upload a single artifact containing all your code and assets and having Play deliver the right download to your users. This means that you don't need to upload any of your game assets separate from your main game. It will all be part of the same bundle and uploaded to the same place you use today to deliver your game. You'll do this by packaging your assets into distinct asset packs, which you will then download during or after install. As a side note, we also want to call out that by using the app bundle, you unlock other great features such as plays you download which allows you to get users into your game faster. Now at the heart of PAD is the flexibility we give developers to deliver their asset packs to their game as they see fit so that they can create the best experience for their users. There are three ways you can deliver your asset packs with PAD. First, there's install time delivery, which will download your asset packs along with your main game download. If you've used OBVs in the past, which we deprecated last year, this is our replacement for packaging assets and install time. Next, there's on-demand delivery, which allows you to dynamically request asset packs in your client code post-launch. This is similar to how a CDN might work today. You only need to download the assets when you need them. Finally, there's fast follow delivery, a unique feature to PAD. It's a bit of a mix of the two. Fast follow pack is almost like an on-demand pack, but instead of it being requested in the client code, the download will be triggered right after the main install is finished. This way, users can enter your game as soon as the main install is complete, even if the fast follow download is not yet finished but by triggering the download right after install, it is less likely your user will be stuck waiting for a download after opening your game for the first time. It's also worth mentioning that you don't need to select just one of these modes for all the assets in your game. Each asset pack can have its own delivery mode independent of the other. Since our launch two years ago, our developers have been loving to use play asset delivery. Just last year alone, the number of Android games using install time delivery in production has increased over 1,000% followed by a 300% increase for those using fast follow and an almost 200% increase of those using on-demand. And no matter how big or small the developer, PAD can help. Just since we last spoke with you about PAD at the Google for Games Dev Summit last spring, we've had a number of new titles adopting this feature. Here's a showcase of a handful of these titles. Okay, so now that we've covered the feature at a high level and showed some of the momentum PAD has coming into 2022, let's dig into how you can start using this in your games today. Now, as a quick note, in this walkthrough, we show the steps to implement using the Java SDK. However, we also offer a native SDK, Unity plugin, and support for Unreal developers to make it easier to integrate PAD with games built on top of those technologies. While there are differences between the SDKs, at a high level, the implementation is similar. OK, let's dig in to how to implement PAD with your game. First, you'll need to create a folder for your assets separate from the main game, which will be named after your asset pack. In this example, we use asset pack zero. Next, create an empty file called build.gradle. We'll populate this in the next step. Finally, create a directory called source main assets. In the asset subdirectory, you will place your directories of assets which you will be retrieving later on. For the build.gradle you just created, you'll give some information on the asset pack, as shown here, namely the asset pack name and the delivery type. Notice how we set the delivery type at the asset pack level. As you'll see, you can include multiple asset packs in your game, and each one can have a different delivery type. To finalize the configurations within your game, you'll need to specify the asset packs you're using in the build.gradle file at the app module level and the settings.gradle file at the root of the project. In this example, we have two asset packs called asset pack zero and asset pack one. 
Finally, you'll need to make sure your Gradle build tools are at version four or above. If you plan on using on-demand or fast follow, -up, you'll also need to include the PlayCore library. Great, now that you've configured your project to be ready for pad, let's get into the changes needed to your client code. Now for install time, this is easy. There's no additional API touchpoint needed. You can just use the asset manager to access the assets on game launch. Since they are delivered as part of the main game installation, you can be sure the assets will be there. And for a fast follow and on demand, you'll need to do a little bit more work to retrieve your assets. First, you'll check to see if the assets are already present. Next, you'll get the size of the pack being requested so that you can let your user know how much you'll be downloading. You'll then register a listener to monitor the status of the downloads, trigger the download. Finally, assuming all goes well, you'll access your assets. Let's take a closer look at what each of those steps consists of. You'll call get pack location to see if the asset pack is already there. If it is, you can then start to access the assets and we'll show you how later on. If the call returns null, then that means the asset pack is not present yet and you'll need to retrieve it. Before kicking out the download, you'll need to retrieve the size of the asset pack you're requesting so that you can show the size to your user. You'll use get pack states to do this. You'll then create a listener to monitor the status of the download. You'll see a subset of those statuses in the code here and can access information such as download progress or failure statuses in case something went wrong. You'll also see a waiting for Wi-Fi case here. This is used if your user is on a meter connection and the download is larger than 150 megabytes. In this case, you'll need to trigger the UI flow as shown to get explicit consent from the user before proceeding with the download. Of course, make sure that later on in your code, once the download completes, you unregister your listener. Finally, we'll start the download with fetch. Assuming all is well, you'll see the code for retrieving the path to the folder containing your assets. In other words, this will give you the location of the asset subdirectory you created in step one. If the download wasn't successful, which could happen if the user cancels your download or loses in the network, you should then notify the user as appropriate. Now we don't cover it in this talk, but we also have methods for canceling requests in flight from the client code or removing an asset pack that's no longer needed. Okay, so we've just covered a lot of code. Let's take a step back and go over at a high level what we just implemented. First, you check to see if the assets are already present. Then you retrieve the size of the packs being requested to let your user know how much you'll be downloading. Finally, you register to listener to monitor the status of the downloads, start of the download, and retrieve the location of your assets. Now that your game should be set up for using Pad, you can use a local testing tool as a part of Bundle Tool to test out your integration before uploading to play. This is a great way to quickly test and iterate during the development phase. As you can see, you supply the Android app bundle artifact into the first call to create an APK set with local testing turned on and then supply that APK set to the install command to download your game to your device. Finally, once you're confident with your pad implementation, you can upload your game to the Play Console, similar to how you do so today, and start delivering the game to your test users. You'll see on the Play Console that there are even some extra features for app bundles, such as the App Bundle Explorer, which will show you which asset packs you're using in your game. And that's it. Your game is now set up to use pad to deliver your game's assets. Now that you've done the work, you can let Play take care of the rest. Now let's cover some additional features you get with Pad. For this section, I'll pass it off to Shen Chen. Thanks, Andrew. My name is Shen Chen Chen, and I'm a developer advocate on Google, working to help developers to be successful on Google Play. Let me walk you through a few more features with Pad and to introduce something new. Even after the first download, you can be rest assured that your users are retrieving the updates. We have building supports for updating assets. Additionally, with Delta patching, we are reducing the update size by only delivering the bytes needed. If you want more control on the updates, you can use our in-game app updates library to do so. You have a 2GB cumulative size limit for all assets pack and 1GB size limit for install time packs specifically and a 512MB limit to each fast follow or on-demand pack. You can have up to 50 assets packs included in your app bundle. Games will all experience different impacts, but in this particular instance, Dev Sister recently migrated their top title, Cookie Run Open Break, to play access delivery. Pad helped the game to reduce the binary size by 23%, which shows a positive impact on day one retention. What is more, since the game doesn't have to rely on CDN download after migration, they can save around $200K per year on that front. Now that you are set up to use a pad to deliver your assets, let's look at some new features. 
we call the smart delivery, which allows you to send optimized game to our users. First, we allow you to send texture compression format specific assets to our game so that you can optimize for the devices you are sending to. Next, with device tier targeting, you can deliver several versions of your assets to different tiers of device as you defined. Let's take a closer look. Texture format targeting works by only sending one version of the assets according to the texture compression format, and the player will automatically identify and deliver the best fit to our users. To enable this, we just need to create your assets pack as shown before and split the folders by different supported formats. After these changes, Play will take off the rest to make sure the right assets are downloaded to your user's device. And your game can use the same file paths to assess the right assets, regardless of the format. Let's talk more about device tier targeting. You can create different quality levels of your assets and deliver an optimized version for different tier of devices according to the hardware specs. In the example here, I have three tiers for device with 5 gig and above, 1 to 5 gigabytes, and below 1 gig. The three set assets with different level of quality can be delivered to the device accordingly. Similar to texture format targeting, you will need to split the folders by different tiers and supply your different quality level of assets. Then you will tell Play how you want to deliver the different tiers of packs. After that, Play will take up the rest. You might be wondering, we always have the idea that the installation success rate is highly correlated with the download size. So many developers put huge effort into making the initial install size as small as possible. However, our recent study tells a bit different story. If you are able to deliver the shootable assets to the right device, the downloading size actually won't limit of the number of the users you acquire. Moontown is using device tier targeting to optimize assets delivery in one of the best performing mobile games, Mobile Legend Bang Bang. Previously, like many other developers, they keep the APK size small, below 150 megabytes, and ask users to download the actual gigabyte size assets after starting the game. Now with Abundos device tier targeting, low-end device will still get low-res assets for a couple of hundred megabytes, while high-end device gets more than 1 gig HD assets directly from Play Store. They actually get a similar or even better install success rate across regions. With the better quality assets delivered to the devices, players can enjoy a much better onboarding experience. Thanks for joining us, and use the link to find out more resources on what we covered. Use Pad today to optimize your assets delivery.